what comes after she said three two and then it's one but you didn't say one one <laughs> Her eyes were angry just Her then. Eyes. Stop <laughs> yelling at me with your eyes. Faye! <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Q&A with PG and PR. We are living our best lives, but we are missing our gallivanting friend who is not here. Gamble, gamble, gamble. Gamble, 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 gamble. <laughs> She's got a gambling problem. We're going to get her in. Celebrate recovery and get her through this. <laughs> Pastor Kim is, I think she might be actually flying back today. Oh. I think so. Hard to say. She must have run out of money then. People ran out of Vegas. money. Aunt Wanda, <laughs> tighten them purse strings back up, send her on her way. <laughs> but uh, thanks for joining us. Great things going on. We're going to answer your questions. I think the title was like, How to Share Your Faith. And we've been in a series, a fantastic series that I have quoted wrong at least four times. <laughs> Can we just talk about it? Did I get it right that time? You got it right. I've said, can we talk about it? Can we let me talk about it? Talk about it. And then can you talk about it? But it's, can we just talk about it? Can we just talk about it? Can we just talk about it. You're quiet. You got to lean in. <laughs> okay. How you doing now? Can you hear me now? FCF. <laughs> it's Pastor Randy. And this is night. It is night. Can we just talk about it? Can we just talk about it? So we got a bunch of questions. Go ahead and throw your we comments do. in there. I'm going to go to the FCF page so that we can, in fact, see your questions live and have our lives enlightened by the knowledge of your presence. While you're going there, would you like me to read a question? It would be no. You ain't got to read it. Oh, you want me to? Oh, must, you, I, sure. Go ahead. I mean, Why don't I, you read it? You know, I'm, I'm just trying to save time. Go I mean, ahead. I got some specs. I got some specs. All right. Proverbs chapter one, verse twenty-six and twenty-seven. It says. I, in turn, will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. This does not sound like the graceful, forgiving God of the rest of the Bible. Are we to assume this is God talking or Solomon? Solomon, who is the writer of Proverbs. It's hard to imagine God laughing at his children going through a disaster, regardless if they choose to follow him or not. Well, they wouldn't be his children if they're not following him. But, okay, to answer the question... Um, if you really look at the context of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, you have to go back to verse 20. And in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, you have wisdom personified. So it's wisdom that is, is speaking, but treated like a human. Yeah. Okay. So it's essentially saying life has truth to it, and your life will exhibit the truth yes. one way or another. And so when it says that... Um, your life is being laughed at when you are rebellious. It's not saying that God is laughing at you. It's saying that wisdom makes makes she. Uh, uh, yeah, the, there you the go. There you go. She, she is used. Now, through. now, having said that, I I, I want to I want to add this to it though. But the Bible does say in other parts of the Scripture yeah. that they God laughs, laughs mocks right. the wicked in, in Psalm two verse four. Mm -hmm. But once again, you have to read the context. The context of Psalm two is that the nations are gathering to overthrow God's kingdom. And it says he looks from the heavens and he laughs at them because, you know, he knows what it's futile. You have it in Psalm, let me get this right, Psalm 37, verse 13, the same thing. But if you read the verses prior to verse 13 in Psalm 37, which is a great psalm, it's all talking about the wicked. You have to understand that in Scripture, and I know you understand, I'm just saying in general, people. <laughs> 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 the Bible, God, does recognize some of us choose to become evil yeah. through and through. And yeah. we, we live in intentional destructive rebellion against God and against uh, other people in life. And so it says that God will laugh at the wicked because they think they're in power. They think they're in control. They think they get the last word. But it says that he laughs because he's going to judge them. And so yeah. Psalm 37. Been, so it's not like God is changing character here. It's that he's, he's uh, responding to circumstances in a way that we understand an emotional response, that these, these individuals are not going to get away with anything. So it's not like it's a different caricature of God. We have a lot of misunderstandings about God. Read Matthew 23 sometime. And in Matthew 23, Jesus is addressing the Pharisees, the religious leaders that were prominent in his day. And when you look through that chapter 23 the things that he says to about them, them yeah, yeah. And, and about them i mean 
you know, we think of Jesus always saying these gentle kind of things. He calls them a pack of snakes. Yeah, he says he literally says to him. He said he, he says I don't see any way you guys will escape hell. <laughs> yeah, I mean he goes on and on. He says they're a bunch of whitewashed tombs. They're hypocrites. I mean he rips them, rips them, but good. And you might wonder why, why, why would he do this? There is a stage of arrogance. Um, I'm actually going to deal with this a little bit this this weekend in the message. But there's a stage of arrogance that humans can get to. That unless you can puncture that balloon sufficiently, they're going to be imprisoned in that arrogance forever. If you can puncture that balloon sufficiently, sometimes a few can escape from the trap of arrogance, of pride, arrogance. So to do that, sometimes you have to confront people with truth that, um, you know, kind of puts it in perspective who they really are and what they're what their real power amounts to, which is not much. I mean, yeah. we, we can't even control the next brain wave. Well, know? that's the that's the irony of them confronting him and saying they're going to overthrow his government. I mean, yeah. that's it's the equivalent of an, why does he laugh? Well, if an ant could speak, an ant looking exactly. at me and saying, I will destroy you. Right. And I'm like, I'm going to step on you. Like, yeah. he chooses not to. There that's you go. the difference. Well, there's the other side of this. He tolerates, for the most part, human rebellion. And, and even when he's confrontational, it's to try to burst the bubble of pride. You, you, you have to puncture it in a way, and it's usually with confronting them with their, their real limitations. So, anyhow. Is there a chance in the context of this conversation that you are able to weave the word quagmire again into it? Because you, you, <laughs> you used it last week, and it yeah. so blessed my soul <laughs> that I had multiple conversations with other people <laughs> who were texting me. Our architect was watching it, okay. and he said, Quagmire. Uh, I, I will try, try to tuck that okay. away. Tuck it away. And see if I can. If the opportunity presents, you used it earlier in my office. Did you, I? You did. You see, it is just spontaneous. It comes out. It just flows. <laughs> <laughs> if you read too much, these things happen to you. It's a good thing. You have a, fan, a fantastic vocabulary, which is, is good because both of us can be a bit verbose. Yes, we can. Uh, and we are, we are verbal processors. We are. <laughs> drives, drives our poor friend. Our this is why friend. she's in Las Vegas now. <laughs> she's like, I have had enough. Just take me away, Jesus. <laughs> What's up, Alan? Hey, that was a great question. Pablo, what's going on? Ross Gosnell. Um, Bucky, what's up, brother? Um, well, yeah, you can let us know if you are watching. Let us know where you're watching from. Feel free to like and share. I got a question here. I haven't read okay. any of these. Well, I read oh, one at the bottom. They're uh, interesting. Um, what is the best service to watch from the past that is good for showing someone who is new to the Word of God and is willing to listen and learn more from a general standpoint? I think they're talking about like, about God or about sharing your faith. I think it's about God. Yeah, it maybe. seems like they're trying to kind of uh, reach out to someone, introduce them. And um, the answer is, is I, and I hate to give this answer, I really don't know. We cover so much material, and there's been so many messages. I can't point to one and say, man, that's the perfect one I, for I somebody. Na I nailed it. I nailed that one. Go listen to that one. Yeah, right. But she, but she is saying about God, the character of God, it sounds like. Well, it sounded like she's trying to introduce somebody to, um, you know, they're, they're new to the whole scene. Yeah, and, um, to, to but, about the but, but you know what? The answer, unfortunately, would be the same. Now, this is where if she were not gallivanting in Las Vegas, oh, yeah. she on. tends to know these kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. This is this is on your hands, Keith Secker. Yeah, the blood, <laughs> the blood is on her, your hands. The blood of her friend. You're out there gambling with your your aunt Wanda. <laughs> She's never gonna come back to us. Come back. We're sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sorry. I yeah. I really we, wish, I'll I, wish I could, we'll do. but I don't. Um, we we will give you an answer in in the the weeks to come. And, okay. and, and maybe if we're misunderstanding this question, you could resend no, she's, it. She's telling us. Oh, oh she's there. She's she watching is in yep. real time. Okay. So we we will look. Uh, what's oh, up, about Thomas? God. So about that's God. why you were See, saying that. You know, look at you, man. I You're slick. Like, I don't look like much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see how this works. All right, here we got another, another question you for read you. The board. <laughs> that's right. They conceal the questions. In the chat to the right. All right. Which, all right. if you are here, I'm privy to this. Throw now. something in the chat. I just thought it was a quagmire. And let now, oh, now, now. I was going to say, I was going to say, let us know <laughs> what quagmire you've gotten yourself involved in today. Is that Miss Debbie walking behind us? Hi, Miss Miss Debbie. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, uh, let, let us know. And actually, we, we are going to be succinct today, right? Because I have a I have a, an appointment in Pennsylvania. You're going to meet somebody Man, from PA. We're going to be so succinct. So succinct, it's going to blow your mind. When you say stop, it's over. <laughs> Shutting it down like we're closing the arc. I don't know. I got that on my mind. Okay, good morning. Good morning to you. I guess they must have sent the question in the morning because it says good morning right we'll there. We'll still answer. I see. I hear so many people say that you don't have to abide. I think it's supposed to be abide by the Old you know, Testament. You know, man, that's some King Jimmy talk. Abide. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. King, yeah. J- King Jimmy. Um, you don't have to abide by the Old Testament. But I was raised, it says to the whole Bible, but to maybe obey the whole Bible. Yeah. What is your stance on the fifth commandment and how? Oh, there are two separate questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what, what, what do you got? Well, the, answer the first one first. Okay, so the fifth commandment is honor your father and your mother. And it's the only commandment that with is given with a promise. Yeah. And it says, so that you will live long in the land. The, what's behind that is if you don't honor your father and mother, they will kill you. <laughs> and hence you won't live long in the land. No, that's that's my addition. That's not, not what it's saying. So it's repeated <laughs> in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. So obviously this is a principle that... that carries a moral connotation to it. Moral principles are more or less, I know that sounds contradictory, eternal. Mm-hmm. All right? Whereas many of the commandments that are given to the nation Israel, they are strictly national. They were just for a specific time in their national existence. But I guess the question is, is should this still be applied today? That's what it is sounded to me like she was saying. I agree. And of course the answer is yes, but here's Jeez. where it gets tricky. All right? for For a five-year-old to honor their father and mother it's going to express itself in one way for a 45 year old to express honor to their father and mother is going to express itself in a very different way so without knowing the context of the question it would be hard for me to give a more specific type of answer so the principle is there but a 45 year old for example may have some advice given by the father and mother but the 45 year old might say you know mom dad i hear you but I don't believe that's what God is leading me to do. That is appropriate. It's not right. disrespect. It's it's <clears throat> so the attitude of respect still needs to be sustained, but that doesn't mean that you submit. Whereas when you're a child, submission is appropriate. You know? Yeah. So ma- maybe maybe that clears it up a bit. Well, and even if your if your parents are not a Christ follower and they're telling you to do something that's immoral, that can be challenging. And that's yeah. where what what is what is the um, the real meaning of to honor them. Right, and that's and so that's yes. that's that's really challenging. I'm I'm blessed. We're different, different backgrounds, yeah. and then I have been blessed to have raised, two parents. I was that raised are, by wolves, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Pastor Andy didn't even know who his who his father was until nah. just recently. I was 70, 70 years old when I found so, out. <laughs> so on, for him, honoring there's even people who have who have challenging backgrounds or whose parents are are immoral. So what does honor look like? So that that looks different to every person. So I'm. I hope that answers that question. Uh, what is your stance on the Fifth Amendment? And how, okay, you already answered the first one. There are truths in both the Old and New Testament that we can live by. You, you answered that. One. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and any of the moral principles that we find in the Old Testament, of course, they carry over. Um, you know, we don't follow the dietary laws in the Old Testament because they were just for the nation of Israel. Okay. Uh, this is from from someone. I, I I was reading a commentary on Genesis in verse six six, Genesis six six, and that God regretted that he had made man. The question, if God knows everything, how could he have regretted making man? Yeah, the word that's used there, uh, the Hebrew word is it's, it's yinaham, and it's repeated in verse 8 again. And it, it is strictly an attempt to express an emotion. So it's not saying like God's uh, regretting that, he, that this caught him off guard. Right. Oh, man, I wish I had no put you guys on earth. It's it's God, you know, expressing emotion. God feels, it, it, you know, he is, he is in pain during this time where evil is existing and it's doing destruction. The cross is an, um, an expression in time of the pain of God with evil and its existence. So that verse is really, um, grieved would be probably a friendlier translation. Yeah. Yeah, and, and some translations do use that term, but it's used in, in verse 6 and verse 8. You know him as word, and it really is expressing an emotion. It doesn't mean like this caught him off guard, and he wished he would have thought things through a little bit more than that. Because we know that the Bible teaches God has foreknowledge. He, yeah. he has seen in advance everything that occurs. He doesn't cause it to occur, but he, he, he see, sees it. Yeah. Um, I thought I saw... 
something up there. Bill Offit, what's up, buddy? Yeah, there it is. Um, Mark, I would say Oliphant. Is that how you would pronounce that? Yes, one? yes, just like Timothy Oliphant, I, the actor. Asks if I ever speak on Sunday mornings. Oh yeah, you're going. You're going to speak something. Well, you were going to speak, but there's there's a couple things in play right now. But yeah, the answer is yes, and you will be doing lots and lots of. Speaking. I am, and I will just say this: I feel so honored to get to be discipled by this incredible man and share the pulpit with him. But yes, I have the privilege of speaking. Well, with, well honestly, Pastor Kim too, even though she's not here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a good egg. She speaks a lot, too. A little cracked, but a good <laughs> egg. Okay. <laughs> I have had my NIV since 2001, and honestly, it has seen better days. Um, I have three questions. We'll start with one at a time. How about that? Can everyone share their preference on Bible versions and why? Go ahead. You want me to go first? You can go first. Um, I, I'll go, and I'm not a good one to ask this question to, but I, I still prefer the either the NIV, the NLT, or the ESV. If I'm going to recommend a, a new study Bible, and it sounds like this lady's in the market for a new study Bible, yep. I, I would say get either the um, NIV Life Application Study Bible or the, the NLT. And frankly, the NLT sometimes reads a little easier. I don't, I don't always like every little nuance it gives, but, but either, either of those three. Uh, yeah. NIV, NLT, or ESV. Now, if you want to get real, uh, making an attempt at a word word translation, the old New American Standard or the 1995 version of the New American Standard um, is also a very good one. So, I would say the same thing. But you're not, going, you're not going to get a study Bible out of those. If you want no. a study Bible, life application study Bible, it's going to be either NIV or NLT, I don't think they make a life application study Bible with the ESV. I don't I believe don't I've think. seen either. But the truth is, the ESV and the NIV are really, very close. Really close. Yeah, yeah. Really close. So, so there's different types of, you, you might know this, you might not, but there's different types of translations. There's, there's Pastor Randy alluded to a, a word for word, which is, they would call that a, a direct equivalency translation, which is what um, King James Version is. American yeah. Standard mm -hmm. is, is also that, New American Standard. Um, and then thought for thought is, is what NIV, ESV, which yes. King, King James, a direct equivalency is great for, for study of specific, like getting to the etymology of a word, breaking it down and looking in that way and then doing word studies. But for like daily reading, I'm the same way. Well, and I'll go further. I go, actually, why, don't you, why don't you go a little further? I'm going to go a little further. I'm going to go a little further. I'm going to clear this quagmire up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, th this is truly a very subjective thing, but yes. uh, you cannot do a word-for-word -word equivalence in, in either agree. Greek or Hebrew. You just can't. And so I think the idea for idea translation concept gives you a far more yeah. accurate uh, yeah. translation. Now, you know, that can be argued the other way, too. But to have maybe one of each, if you really are a, a sincere student of the Bible, you know, so you go to your, your New American Standard for a word-for-word -word attempt. I, I use the word attempt because you can't, you just can't do that. Um, and then you have an, an NIV or something for the idea translation. But the bottom line, these are all wonderful, Fancy, wonderful family, translations yeah. we have today. And it's making studying the Bible easier than it ever has been in all of human history. Real, it, really true. And if you, be, if you believe <laughs> communicating the thought for thought is a significantly more comprehensive or realistic way of translating because if you take words from the English language and translate them there there's many that there's not even a direct equivalency for no. ba baptism there is no direct the, None. Ba baptizo we've created this which is called a transliteration they'll take the word and they'll make a word they make the word baptism which means to immerse but it's th there's constant things from one language to another that just don't translate those of you that are bilingual or, or more know that there's incredibly challenging that you can't do so to try to take even contextually from where we are now culturally mm -hmm. jumping back 2,000 years, yeah. there's even expressions and things that, that would be lost on us. So you're, you're much better. But the main know. thing to remember is we have very trustworthy Absolutely. translations of the Bible. Absolutely. It's never been a better time to study the Bible than Absolutely. the day and age we live in. And even the resources that we have online, like you shared last oh, week, my goodness, places yeah. you can go, Bible Gateway and others, Absolutely. that are right there at your fingertips. Yeah, tons and tons of study tools so that anyone can become an expert overnight. 
Yeah. Well, maybe not overnight, but. <laughs> well, the, the other type, there's direct equivalency, dynamic equivalency, and then there's what are called paraphrases, which is like yeah. the message Bible. And what's another really popular one is? Yeah. What, uh, the the, the uh, Living Bible living is Bible. one of the first popular yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. But in all of those translations, as we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the, theology, the translator's theology kind of creeps in. So anyways. We, we, yeah, but we don't want to. We'll digress. Nah, we'll take, take nah, on nah, the wrong path. And that's, that's in very few minor uh, portions of scripture so but okay here we go so that was the first question um i, I noticed there's an NIV bible the church I have my eyes on yeah that'd be great i would like to consider another version as well to use in addition to the niv what are all your thoughts on two that i should get so you, you already said the answer to that question also can you explain there I, I will throw out one more if, if they're looking for just another bible that could be a helpful study the, the amplified is really interesting oh yeah because the amplified attempts to give <clears throat> verb tenses and uh, and, and it's, it is it does what it says it amplifies it expands so you can't find a one word for word translation so they might put in three or four words no parentheses it and yes. that you know which is yes. really helpful it, it really is yeah so. that's a that's a good call now what you just brought up <laughs> theological per perspective does sneak in in the yeah. amplified so you you a little cautionary yeah. note there <clears throat> the, only, the only thing is people get so hung up on some of that stuff like keep the main things the main things yes. and, and you're gonna you're gonna, you're be, gonna be fine and if you're getting deeper into study yeah. then get deeper into study but anyways I digress yes. okay uh, also can you explain the reason why there are 16 verses not in the NIV and NIV and some other versions uh, yes and, and we talked about this I just happened to know this question up there uh, what do you think in the message version y you mentioned that but but here's the thing I would say about the message it is the most wild paraphrase I have ever, ever, ever seen. Sometimes I'll look at it and I'm just like, huh? <laughs> so my answer is, is that if you're going to choose a paraphrase, I wouldn't recommend the message. It's just wild, man. It's like this somebody took some acid and they started trying to paraphrase the Bible and out There's, came the message. You know? There is a new one. Uh... <laughs> There is a new one. I think is it called the Postmodern Bible? Postmodern Bible one. translation, and it is. Oh, I'll bet it's a doozy. Yeah, just that Mi <laughs> postmodern. Miss Faith or Miss Leslie, can you can you text me or drop me a link to that? It's hilarious. It's it's very comical. It's if you are not uh, up on the modern colloquialism that the youths use, uh -oh. you will be lost immediately. I'll, I'll be I know. Lost. I know both I would of you. Absolutely, be lost. <laughs> I know both of you uh, know what I'm talking about, so stick it in there, ladies, if you if you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. I so, don't mind. I, I thought we had another serious question. There, there are. There's, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not done yet. Okay. Ben. So there was um, the 16 verses not included in that. Yeah, that's what we were trying to. Okay. Yeah. So it, here's the thing. We touched on this last week. Okay. So in, let, let's just take the King James because it makes for an easy example. Uh, they were based on a set of manuscripts, ancient manuscripts. They find yeah. fragments. Of Greek manuscripts, they go back different dates and like that. Uh, the group of manuscripts they use called the Septuagint, or the Textus Recept, not the Septuagint. Forget, scratch that. That's wrong. It's called the Textus Receptus, um, or the Stephen's text of manuscripts. All right. So Mark 16, the entire thing is in there. But if you read modern translations of any kind, whether it's NIV or NET or just any number, they will have a note and says. This was not found in earlier manuscripts. So the, the new translations are from a body of manuscripts, meaning many, many fragments of manuscripts that were, they predate the Textus Receptus, which was used for the King James. So in these earlier manuscripts, that portion of scripture didn't exist. Yeah. Now, modern translations are not saying that they're not inspired or that they shouldn't be there. They're just saying, the first manuscripts, many, many earlier manuscripts, that wasn't there. Yeah. So that could be an addition. Now, don't get all freaked out. There's only a few of these in the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. They don't change the meaning of any cardinal doctrine or anything like that. But that's what that's about. Yeah. It's two sets of piles of manuscript fragments that they're translating from. And so yeah. that, that's what that's about. I think I told Pastor Randy, too, that I, I had at one point went to see what was called the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. I don't know if I've shared this on here before, but I, we there was an exhibit that was in New York. My wife and I went up to see it. And I pictured, you know, when they say Dead Sea Scrolls, you know what I pictured in my head? Mm -hmm. Scrolls. <laughs> scrolls. Well, if, if you are a student of that culture, you realize that paper was like 
It was, it was very similar in value to gold. So we, <laughs> we walked in and all the lights are out and they are pieces of paper of papyrus, I think primarily, that were about this big with the smallest, like, micrography, tiny little writing on it that was done by scribes that was mm -hmm. what our texts come from. Yeah, and, and some of it is, of course, there's much more to go with, but, but Absolutely. they even did things on little pieces of copper and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, But nevertheless, we, we, we have a trustworthy so Bible, a and Bible. when you find Absolutely. those footnotes, now you know it's because there were some earlier manuscripts that didn't include those yeah. particular portions. I mean, John 8 is another one, the story that... You know, the woman that's caught in adultery and the, you know, the people ready to stone her. That also has a little, <laughs> little footnote to it, yep. uh, but there's not many of those. Um, Matthew 17, 20, we're referring to... Finally, another question. Mm -hmm. Is Matthew 17, 21 referring to an increased faith or the casting out of demon spirits? Oh, um... I would have to, I'm sorry, I did not see that question, and I didn't read. I'd have to Let's read the, the entire text a little more carefully before I give a definitive right. answer. We, we, can do, we can do that next week, then. Uh, okay. Matthew 17. Do you want me to peek at it right now? Or yeah, no? I, well, maybe we should jump to cover the other questions. I might be able to cover those in a more timely oh. fashion. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, 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 this is the, these are the ones that come out by, by prayer and fasting. Oh, says, that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So the question is... is uh, yeah, <laughs> referred to an increased faith, or the... Is Matthew seventeen twenty one referring to an increased faith or the casting out of demon spirits? I mean, well, I think it's kind of both. Yeah. And um, a a as to what Jesus is specifically talking to, it sounds as if he's saying it requires kind of an inner spiritual preparedness to cast out certain demons that are, I, I know this sounds crazy, for whatever reason, that are harder to cast out than others. Um, I, I know from reading testimonies about people that are very active in demonology that there are some demons that will fight the exorcist the whole time and tell lies and stories and, you know, there might be tons of demons in there but only one will speak up. And So the people that really deal with this stuff they know that some require a, a certain inner preparation that's much more Spiritual severe. Spiritual preparation. Yeah. So I, I, I can't speak authoritatively because, uh, thankfully, I've never had to <laughs> cast a demon out of anyone. Hope I don't have to. <laughs> Here's another question. I called, Christ I called Christians crazy people. I was saved February 24th, 2022. It happened again overnight. Happened. It happened it overnight. Happened overnight. I was drinking... And rum. <laughs> we might want to come back to that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think that might call for a call. Might give uh, me a call. I, honestly, if that person would want to <laughs> give me a call, and I could maybe try to understand better what what, they're, what yeah. they're saying. Yeah. Hey, Nadine. Hello, Miss Nadine. <laughs> Nadine, watching. Um, did I answer this one already? The current, no, no, I didn't ask you this one already. The current series is about sharing the gospel with different types of people. I have someone in my life who I'd love to share the gospel with. Basically, she, this person go on, goes on to explain that when she tries to share the, their faith with someone, the person, they shut <coughs> down, they kind of distance themselves from mm -hmm. her. They don't know how to respond when the kids even sing like worship songs and stuff. So ha, basically, um, I could provide more t details, but how do I approach this person? How do I share my faith? Yeah, the, the answer is, is, is you, you have the conversation. You said to him, say, hey, look, you know, you, we're, we're friends, and man, I, I cherish our friendship, but I, I've noticed something, and please forgive me if, if I'm not speaking accurate on this, but I've noticed that it seems like, now that you're not accusing him, you say, seems like each time I introduce the subject of spiritual matters at all, uh, even if it's saying a prayer or whatever at a meal, that it, it's not comfortable for you. It's, it's something you would rather not be brought up. Help me understand. Am I reading you correctly? And again, that's a key phrase. Help me understand your reaction to that. Am I misreading that? I don't really know what your spiritual background may be. Yeah. Is there something perhaps that I'm clumsily bringing up that is causing you discomfort? I mean, you don't know the person. Could be a Muslim. Could be a Hindu. Could be militant atheist. Could have had a bad experience in a church. You know. So I would have. I'd simply have the conversation. Say, hey, I think I've noticed this. If if I'm not seeing this correctly. 
uh, help, help me understand. You know, so that, that that's the way to handle that. Is you uh, you need more information. You need to know what is causing their apparent reaction. I don't even know if we should get into this other <laughs> translation <laughs> or read it another time. Uh, why don't we only put off another time because we might go over our time. <laughs> Let's make sure we cover these questions. I think we did. Oh, good. I think we did. Oh, we're really got them all in there. Doing a great job today. <laughs> Brittany, uh, somebody asked how my foot is doing. My foot is doing fantastic. It is, it is good. I actually saw one of our incredible parishioners who oversees a bunch of uh, PT clinics, and, and he took fantastic care of me. And even following that, I'll be honest, the most irritating part of the whole thing is the, the, the apparatus that they make me wear. I feel fine. I walk around. You've mastered it, man. You, um, you go around quite uh, with a lot of agility. Mm -hmm. So, and, right. and I think it's actually increased your speed a little bit. You know that scooter. You're mocking me. You <laughs> no, no, mock. you are fast on that scooter. When you when you get open field, man. <laughs> you mock my pain, and what? then you're supposed to say, "Life is pain, Highness." Does anyone what? know that that movie quote? You mock my pain. Life is pain, Highness. Who knows what Who knows what it is? Very popular movie. Don't know. But you are mocking me, pretty much. No, I, I'm telling you, man, you're you've got a burst of speed on that scooter. Fifty yards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Eagles, and Pastor Pete Eagles. E A G L. Oh, he's my my team. That's my team. Uh, <laughs> amazing Pastor Wheels. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us. Why don't you give them, give them a, little, you know, a, little something. a little something for Sunday. Okay. Um, in this series, we've been talking about types of people that we come across and that we want to have spirit, intentional spiritual conversations with them. This last message in the series, we're going to talk about people that we don't come across very often, but we do, and they are perhaps the hardest type to talk to. Uh, they're skeptical. You know, they, they may be um, agnostic, they may be atheist, they may be more scientifically oriented, they may be more philosophically oriented, but they're, yeah. they have a propensity to be argumentative and even aggressive. So how do we converse with these people? And, and there, there's no right or wrong answer, but we'll look at a portion of Scripture that gives us a very definite pattern. Can know. we just talk about it? <laughs> Can we? We will try. Come on. This is what we will try to do. You ever, you ever watch William Shatner's program on the unexplained? No. Oh, okay. Uh, after each subject, he, he, uh, he'll say, and this is what we will try to find out. And this <laughs> is what we will try to My man is like 92 or something Still like that. Still doing it. Going strong. That's going to be. I hope. That's going to be I my hope. guy. I hope. My guy. <laughs> yeah. The latter shall be. For Anyways, I digress. Uh, Ross Gosnell, you are correct. The movie was Faith. Did you know? You didn't know. What was What was the movie? I, Princess I Bride. Oh yeah. Man, I mean, I love Princess Bride. I've watched it multiple yes. times, but I don't. You mock I don't my remember. Pain. Life is pain, honey. The uh, you know the lines. The little the idiot. You yeah, oh, your 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 memory is remarkable. It's terrifying up there. I you know, bet. It's just, I bet. It's just, A lot of horsepower. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, we oftentimes have people ask how they can help with some of the, the growth and the things that are going on in our church we've experienced. I, I think the verbiage we're using is consistent and rapid growth at the church. One of the things that you can do for us is show up on time for church. Make sure you're here um, if you're coming to first or second service, um, specifically for second service because there's transition between getting kids out, getting new kids in, getting the parking lot emptied, which our team has got. They did it in 13 minutes between first and second service. That's about as good as you're going to do anyway. That's e fantastic. Even in a small church with a small parking lot, that, that's going to be kind for, of typical. For as many people as we have leaving, it is, it's incredible. We're still working on it to get better, though, so thank you for your patience with that. But you can help us. You can help us by coming early. What's really challenging for our auditorium hosts is when people show up once the worship has already started, everyone is standing, the lights are down, and it's hard to see seats and puts them kind of in an awkward position when they're trying to help. So do us the incredible favor of, Come on time for church, bring somebody, and expect that God is going to speak to you through his word. If you wanted to be rewarded in eternity, you could come early, mm. sit in the middle of a row, mm. and wait until somebody comes and sits beside yeah. you. And, and then if they put a chair between you and them, Slide over. move over. <laughs> <laughs> and you might you might be rewarded in and, eternity. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, think I, it's possible. There was a question that I think we should 
capture for next week. We will. I it's, saw it's, it. Okay, you yep, saw it. Yes. I saw it, yeah. So, and honestly, it's, but in, in all, <laughs> in all deference, in all, in, you know, you, you, it's your eternity. Spend it the way you want. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's just so, an hour sitting beside someone. If you, if a person you, for whom Christ died. <laughs> if you want to spend it on the glassy sea with a dock and jet skis. There you go. This is the way. If not, this if is If you want to live in a little village with no electricity. <laughs> That's okay, too. <laughs> None of what we said is actually true. It's all heresy. <laughs> yeah, no, no truth to any of it. <laughs> we but love we, you. But we would like you to sit beside someone. <laughs> that part is true. Yeah. But as far as, uh, anyways, well, there's still a rule. Anyways, okay, here we go. 9-15, 11-15, we love you, FCF. Well, oh, I missed it. Here, fake water bottle coming. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs>